Good morning. Welcome from uh, Chile, uh, Clover, South Carolina, and Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we gather together for our morning devotion, which today comes from 2 Corinthians 6.16 and Proverbs 16.20. Let's begin our time with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are our God and we are your people. And to God, as we think more about those words and what they mean for the Christian life, God, we ask that your mercy and grace would be evident in our hearts and our lives, that we would seek your face and that we would be drawn to love you in every way with all of our hearts. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Again today, our morning reading comes to us from 2 Corinthians 6.16. I will be their God and they shall be my people. What a sweet title, my people. What a cheering revelation, their God. What a wealth of meaning is couched in those two words, my people. Here is speciality. The whole world is God's. The heaven, even the heaven of heavens is the Lord's, and he reigns among the children of men. But of those who he has chosen, whom he has purchased to himself, He says what he says not of others, my people. In this word, there is the idea of proprietorship. In a special manner, the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob, his allotted heritage, as we read in Deuteronomy 32.9. All the nations upon earth are his. The whole world is in his power. But his people, his chosen are more especially his possession. For he has done more for them than for others. He has bought them with his blood. He has brought them to himself. He has set his great heart upon them. He has loved them with an everlasting love, a love that many waters cannot quench, and that the revolutions of time will never in the least degree diminish. Dear friends, can you by faith see yourself in that number? Can you look up to heaven and say, My Lord and my God, mine by that sweet relationship that entitles me to call you Father, mine by that hallowed fellowship that I rejoice to enjoy with you, when you are pleased to show yourself to me as you do not to the world. Can you read the Bible and find there the guarantee of your salvation? Can you read your title written in precious blood? Can you by humble faith lay hold of Jesus' garments and say, My Christ? If you can, then God says of you and of others like you, My people. For if God be your God and Christ your Christ, the Lord has a special interest in you. You are the object of his choice, accepted in his beloved Son. Amen. You know, this is something that is as much true in the New Testament as it was in the Old Testament. And it's interesting that Spurgeon chooses to bring out this teaching from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. It's worthwhile to remember that the church is God's special people. And as God's special people, we are the beneficiaries of the spoils of the cross and of all the blessings of the household of the living God. And the question we need to ask ourselves is, is are we taking advantage of these riches? Are we resting and trusting in the safety of living in the house of the God of the universe? Are we taking advantage of the opportunities to pray with our God? But most especially, are we taking advantage of times to pray with our brothers and sisters in Christ? We who are fellow heirs and fellow beneficiaries of these promises, is this our testimony? And we need to ask those questions of our own soul and our own heart, because really that's what motivates us to holy living and to joy in Christ, this knowledge of the safety and the comfort that we have in our God as his people. Well, let's turn to the evening reading today from Proverbs 16, 20, 
Whoever gives thought to the word will discover good, and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Wisdom is man's true strength, and under its guidance he is best able to find and fulfill his reason for living. Wisely handling the matter of life gives to man the richest enjoyment and presents the noblest occupation for his powers. And in this way, he finds good in the fullest sense. Without wisdom, man is like a wild donkey running here and there, wasting strength that he might have been profitably employed. Wisdom is the compass by which man is to steer across the trackless waste of life. Without it, he is a derelict vessel, the victim of winds and waves. A man must be prudent in such a world as this, or he will find no good, but will be betrayed into unnumbered ills. The pilgrim will sorely wound his feet among the briars of the wood of life if he does not pick his steps with the utmost caution. He who is in a wilderness infested with thieves must handle matters wisely if he would journey safely. If trained by the great teacher, we will follow where he leads. We will find good even in the darkness and celestial fruits to be tasted and songs of paradise to be sung amid the groves of the earth. But where shall this wisdom be found? Many have dreamed of it without possessing it. Where will we learn it? Let us listen to the voice of the Lord. For he has declared the secret. He has revealed to the sons of men where true wisdom lies. And we have it in the text. Blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. The true way to handle a matter wisely is to trust the Lord. This is the sure clue to the most intricate labyrinths of life. Follow it and find eternal bliss. He who trusts in the Lord has a diploma for wisdom granted by inspiration. Happy is he now, and happier he shall be above. Lord, in this sweet evening walk with me in the garden, and teach me the wisdom of faith. Oh, man, you know, this passage that we just read, Proverbs sixteen twenty. whoever gives thought to the word will discover good and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord is a reminder of the need to follow the path that Jesus has walked. You know, many times we are like uh, young children who, when following their parents in the store or at the, at Disney World or wherever, just want to run off and Seek whatever it is we see that catches our eye. But we need to look at where our Savior is going, where he has gone, and we need to walk with him and behind him and be guided by his wisdom, by his grace, and by his desire. You know, this is a challenge uh, for me as well as uh, for all of us, especially as we live in a time uh, where so many are shouting at us to go and follow in a new way, in a fresh way, in a way that's never been thought of before. But we have been called to walk, as the prophet Jeremiah says, the old paths, the well-worn paths, the paths that lead us to the springs of the waters of Christ's grace. And let us carefully walk among those paths. Again, in the promise that where Jesus leads, is to the heavens themselves and into the eternal bliss that comes with re resting and trusting in him. May you be blessed today and may you be guided by the very word of the living and the true God, the path that leads to righteousness. God bless and take care.